Hi guys, Danny here today to talk to you about a book that for me was surprisingly emotional and impactful. And it was surprising because based on the title, I, I didn't expect it to have the impact that it ended up having on me. Now, I really, there we go. Part of the reason, sorry, part of the reason that it, the title of the book is Soldier Dogs. So part of the reason that the book was impactful was because it's about dogs. I love dogs. I'm a dog lover. I've been a dog lover my entire life. My sisters were cat people. Um, and, you know, but the dog was mine. The cats were theirs in our house. The cat's my wife's. The dog's mine. I, I'm fine with cats. I don't hate cats, but I love dogs. And there were definitely stories of dogs giving their lives to, to save the men that they were there to protect. But then it's also impactful because it wasn't just stories of the dogs and their acts of heroism. It, it was stories of their handlers and their acts of heroism. Now, one thing I want to point out here, you, you might be fooled into thinking, hey, because of the title Soldier Dogs, this book is about dogs in the army because soldiers refers to, to men and women in the army. Air Force are called airmen, Navy, sailors, Marine Corps, Marines are riflemen. So there, there are specific terms that refer to specific, but it's not just about dogs in the army. It, it's, it's dogs who serve America. They might be with the DEA. They, they might be with police forces, you know, they, the army, Marines, that doesn't get differentiated in the book. She explains which branch of the dog that she's telling the stories about or, or what their job is, but it's not specific to the army. So that's the other reason why it was impactful, because there are stories in this book of marine dog handlers giving their lives to protect their dogs and the men around them. I have a son who went through Marine Corps boot camp. He wanted to be a dog handler, so... And he, he didn't get that MOS, that MOS is filled up, but he picked an equally dangerous MOS. So there were parts of the book that scared me a little bit. So anyhow, back to the book. It's a really, really good book. And it's not just stories of acts of heroism on the parts of the dogs and their handlers. The book, it gives you the history of dogs in the military. You get introduced to the first official dog that, you know, was in the army during World War II. And, and the discovery's got a museum and all kinds of stuff. You, you get introduced to the history of how the military ended up deciding, hey, we need to incorporate dogs. We need to bring dogs in. And how that has evolved and changed. How in the beginning, they really mishandled it a lot. The, the dogs were, were, you know, the end of their service, they were all euthanized. And, and then things that have changed. But it also addresses things that still need to change. Because while they've changed and they've come a long way, there's still, a, in my opinion, a, a ways to go to properly treat these dogs. <clears throat> like I said, it was an emotional book for me. Um, it gives you... The standards that dogs have to meet to be accepted in the military service. And this is kind of fun because on this part, she's she's obviously a dog person. She has a dog. So as she's going through the standards, she compares her dog to those standards. Oh, my dog would meet that standard. <laughs> no, my dog would not meet that standard. Which kind of gets you thinking the same thing. So I'm thinking about my dog, Jersey. Would Jersey meet these standards? Yeah, my dog would not meet the standards to be a military working dog. She's not aggressive enough, and she doesn't care enough about the ball. She loves to play fetch, and she loves her ball, but she has no problem giving it up. And you'll have to listen to the book to see what I mean, because that's a major component of that. It's a surprising that there are some components of what they look for in a dog that are kind of surprising. <laughs> That matters. I wouldn't have thunk it if I hadn't listened to the book. It gives the history of some of the dogs after they've gotten out of the service. 
it uh, addresses, you know, the, the process that the military goes through to get the dogs. Some of the training that the dogs go through. So it's not simply a book on heroic acts by dogs. There are heroic acts by dogs and their handlers in there. You definitely get the stories of them saving lives at the cost of their own life or at the cost of their limbs. There, there are heartwarming stories. There are heart-wrenching stories. But there's also a, a lot of really useful... Uh, well, I don't... <laughs> useful, okay. So you learn if you want to adopt a military working dog, you learn what to do. And then by the end of the book, you may well want to adopt one of these dogs. I, if, if our life circumstances were different, then I'd be wanting to adopt one of these dogs, quite honestly. So you, you do learn, and that's useful information there, but you, you learn a lot of information. The narration is wonderfully done, uh, very happy with the narration, just happy with the entire book in general. If you love dogs, if, if just you're curious at all about what does it take to be a military dog, where do they get these dogs from? That one might surprise you, where they get these dogs from. And even... Some some of the book addresses where other countries get their dogs from and compares that to where America gets its dogs from and then explains why that works for their country, but it won't work for our country. It is an excellent book. I definitely recommend the book. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please put them in the comments. Send them my direction. I will attempt to respond to you. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like my channel, please subscribe, turn on notifications, you'll get notified when I post a new video. But most importantly, absolute most important, no matter what else you do today, make sure that you listen to at least one really good 